What's up there all of you? Sorry for looking kind of trashy right now. It's um, two o'clock in the middle of the night. And I'm out here vlogging. Why? Because I couldn't sleep. And I wanted to keep you up to date. So I guess it was the perfect time. Anyways, remember when uh, some time ago, um, at the start of early spring, I uploaded this video where I was talking about a butterfly, a butterfly project that I was doing. Well, in this video you saw me um, opening a box of uh, what were basically overwintering eggs of the Chrysocephiria or Thermocephiria ataxis. So, this is how I've been keeping my overwintering eggs of a butterfly from Japan. Uh, I'm not sure what scientific name to use. Uh, people seem to have their different preferences. Now I'm into moths, not into butterflies, so I'm not really 100% up to date on their taxonomy. Anyway, this Chrysocephiria ataxis is um, a Tecleine, uh, one of the hair streaks from uh, Asia. And it was a beautiful species, so I couldn't resist because I thought, hey, why not? I could use some more experience with butterflies. So these eggs hatched. And the caterpillar started to grow, but along the way, unfortunately, I had many losses. And I'm sad to say that only one, one individual made it to a butterfly, a beautiful female. Um, they weren't difficult to raise at first. At first, actually, I had success. I had um, like 30 caterpillars. Hello, everyone, and thanks for watching another of my insect vlogs. Remember when I said I had rare eggs of a rare butterfly from Japan? Exactly, it was this video. Well, actually I'm a moth man at heart. I study moths and not butterflies. But this was really one of my first attempts with butterflies. I did breed a few species before, like the Old World Swallowtail, Papilio Magaon, and Vanessa Atalanta, the Red Admiral. But all of those are relatively simple. I've always liked butterflies, but the thing is, butterflies don't like me. All my breeding projects with butterflies often end up in sad failure. With moths I was successful, and this was the reason that I gradually started to favor moths over butterflies. Actually, the moths chose me instead of me choosing the moths. And you know what, I'm happy that way, but still, for the sake of diversity, I would like to try something different. Am I successful? Uh, mildly. The good news is I'm raising a few caterpillars of um, the eggs I had from Japan. They've hatched and some are in the late stage of development. The bad news is I had a lot of mortality, so out of a lot of eggs I only have two caterpillars left. And also not all of my eggs managed to hatch, so there's a lot of room for improvement to make here. In fact, um, a ton. But from now on I've decided I will just experiment more with butterflies. Moth will always be my favorite. But diversity on my channel is a good thing. So, please wish me some luck. So, maybe in the future there will be some cooler projects than this. But, in the final stage some of them start to die. And I blame uh, me keeping them in plastic boxes for this. Uh, this is not a good setup for butterflies, but I mainly breed moths, so most of my experience is about breeding moths, not butterflies. Okay, so I'm actually a newbie if it comes to butterfly biology. So, um, anyway, I only have one butterfly out of many eggs, so that's not a great success. But the good news is, one is better than nothing. So, I'm gonna show you. The one female that hatched of Chrysocephiria hatoxis and you know the adult caterpillar. You may want to have a look at that. Let's check it out, friends. Now, here is the female of the Thermocephirius ataxis, or you can say Chrysocephirius ataxis, whatever you prefer. What I find quite interesting is that if the females are confronted with a bright light source, such as a light bulb, a flashlight, but also the sun, that they will open and spread their wings and attempt 
to show off their iridescent blue patches, as you can see here. This behavior is actually a mode of communication. This is her attempt at trying to get the attention of the males that are very sensitive to the iridescent blue spots on her wings and will see the shiny blue as an attractant. Basically, she is currently saying, hey boys, I'm single. And this is a canopy species, that means that these butterflies generally live in the treetops. And it's in fact very common for treetop species to have uh, iridescence as a mode of communication. Because in the treetops, well, apparently it's very hard for insects to distinguish their partners from the background. That could be because there is a lot of blue light coming from the sky directly above them and a lot of green light uh, of the tree leaves, of the canopy, of the tree line. Now you may think, huh? Green leaves of trees and a blue sky. So why would they have blue iridescence against a blue background? Well, the answer is a little bit more complicated, to be honest. Turns out that iridescence is a different kind of light. It has to do with polarization and insects can distinguish polarized light from the background if they want to. Some of their eyes are sensitive to this and the wing iridescence basically also polarizes the light. So that means they can distinguish this kind of blue from the blue of the sky. I may also want to include a little bit of a shout out to Mark Yules, who is a researcher. He researches the iridescence of butterflies and in particular that of the uh, Apatura species and their relatives. But he's really the one that relates this information to me. So it is fair to give him somewhat of a shout out. Mark, if you're watching this, this is not an emperor butterfly, but it may be a species that you enjoy.